There's awkward moments, then there's catfish moments. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most awkward catfish reveals. For this list, we're focusing on the most difficult to watch meets, confrontations, and embarrassing encounters from Catfish the TV show. So get ready to fidget around in your seat, these are pretty hard to watch. Number 10, Danny and Rosa. We kick things off with a classic catfish formula. Guy finds girl online, guy tries to meet, girl gives ridiculous excuses why that can't happen. Okay, how did you not meet up once you moved down to Orlando? Well, that's been the dilemma. She kept on giving me the runaround of like with her job, she's working all these long hours. In this incident, it was Danny and dream girl Rosa. Here she is. Wow, there's a lot of photos. After Neve and Max intervene and ultimately convince Rosa to come out of the dark, it turns out that Rosa is actually a guy called Jose. What are you doing, man? And I didn't mean for this to happen like this. Aren't you ashamed of yourself, bro? Jose then explains that he was able to trick Danny by putting on a creepily convincing woman's voice. I mean, I don't know what's going on. You know, a lot of things have been changing in my life. We actually feel really sorry for Jose, despite his betrayal, as he clearly has some self-esteem and anxiety issues, leaving us unsure where to look and how to feel. You know, like, I'm embarrassed about the whole situation. Really, I'm, like, I can't even sleep at night, you know, thinking about all this stuff, all the consequences. Hats off to Danny for being able to forgive him. Que Dios te bendiga, Jose. Number 9, Whitney and Bree. Do you think Whitney is messing with us? Is that what's happening right now? Okay, so this one gets a little complicated. But in a nutshell, Whitney met Brie online, and the pictures Brie used were of a girl called Cash, who is actually very close friends with Whitney and video chats her all the time. She's lying to us. Does she she's gotta be lying to us. Does she she's gotta know that Lush is, is Brunel. They're very good friends. Ultimately, this episode is about a couple who lied about catfishing just so they could get MTV to pay for plane tickets for them to meet. Of course, this is uncovered in the episode, and we watch as Neve and Max confront Whitney head-on about her deception. We were looking through your messages, and basically, we found these. A little over four years of conversation. 55 pages. There's a lot of awkward silences, and Whitney initially denies it all. I didn't hit you up to do this. But not for long. You'd lie to the show so that you could come on and then meet each other in person. Yeah. Number eight, Ramon and Paola. Hi, Ramon. This episode was all about denial. Well, this girl's name is definitely Paola. The question is, is this the girl you're talking to? Down on his luck, Ramon met Paola online. And even after video chatting and seeing that she was actually a girl called Loida, Ramon ignored it, continued the charade, and even sent her thousands of dollars and his bank info. I got her a Wii, and then I got her a new phone. What else have you done? I gave her my bank information. What? Yeah. Dude. But Neve and Max only found out about Ramon's denial of the truth when they met Loida, and they weren't thrilled. You called me by my name before. If that situation wasn't weird enough, it's then revealed that Loida had used the money Ramon sent her to buy herself an engagement ring and not tell him. Did you send that ring? No, I never sent her a ring. Have never you? ever sent her never, a ring. Never ever ever. Even though she was outed, Loida's mother then gets super defensive when the guys call her daughter a liar. My daughter's a liar? What about Ramon? Ramon has his own issues to deal with. Number seven, Antoine and Tony. The joke was always on me. <laughs> so now the joke is on you. Ah, family. You can trust family, right? Well, not if Antoine and Carmen's story is anything to go by. Basically, the two are really close cousins, with Carmen contacting the show about Antoine's suspicious relationship with a guy online called Tony. It was a house full of people when he did me. Yeah, also, were full of people when I did him. Neve and Max start digging, but hit dead end after dead end. Until, out of the blue, Carmen straight up admits that she is in fact Tony. The reason why you stupid idiot can never find who Tony is because I'm Tony. She was catfishing her cousin to get back at him for humiliating her in public three years ago. And that male voice Antoine has been listening to was Carmen all along. What voice are you using to talk to him? The Tony voice. It's you know, I'm thinking about you. Just want to let you know that you know, I do care for you. The reveal is excruciating as Antoine totally loses it. The bad language bleeps were working overtime for this one. That's some what? Number six, Kayla and Courtney. Logic would tell me you can't talk to dead people. The story of Kayla and Courtney is a totally unique one. This online relationship wasn't about romance, it was about contacting the dead. Courtney contacted Kayla, claiming that she was a medium who had been talking to her late father. So I get really excited when Courtney messages me because inside my mind, I want to believe her. 
I want to have full faith in her. Naturally, everyone involved was skeptical until they met face to face. You yeah, have your dad's eyes. Things got pretty emotional with Kayla and Courtney embracing each other and crying. The ever cynical Neve and Max just looked shell shocked, glancing at the camera in disbelief. Kayla was completely convinced. To be honest with you, I never even knew that I had this ability. <laughs> I mean, it was so overwhelming for me too for the longest time. It takes Neve and Max a while to come around, but they end up buying into it too. Neve even admitted at a later date that the incident changed his outlook on the afterlife. I finished that episode genuinely believing that there is not only an afterlife, but that there is a way to communicate between this world and whatever else is sort of out there after it. Number five, Lucas and Many. As you guys knew me as Lucas, um, I'm Zach, It's my real name. Some people who catfish people do it as a one-off. Others have an obsession with it. And Lucas belongs to the latter, as he admitted to catfishing over 400 people in this episode. How many girls? Too many um, that I talked personally with. I got their numbers, like 400. That's disgusting. Yeah. After doing some snooping, Neve and Max gathered several of the people Lucas catfished and had them doorstep him at his house. The entire encounter was very strange, with Lucas fidgeting the whole time, seemingly oblivious to the damage he'd caused and nonchalantly recording the conversation for his own pleasure. Honestly, I don't think you even have feelings. That's how I feel. And even after getting a telling off, Lucas leaves the girls with a flippant remark that just straight up pisses Neve off. Did you just completely forget everything we just no. said to you about you like appearing like a total <laughs> dead, and then as we're leaving, you make like a jestful remark? Miss no. you all? Number four, Lucille and Kid Cole. I'm in trouble. I want to find out what's going on, who he is, why is he doing this, because this is not how you treat somebody. As we've already seen, catfishing isn't always just about romance. In the case of Lucille and her so-called recording artist employer Kid Cole, it was about a job opportunity, which ultimately left her in heaps of debt. Who are you working with? Right now I have a place with, right now with Wale, right now I'm working on, and then I have another one with, um, with Rizzo from Wu-Tang. Con artist Kid Cole convinced Lucille that he was working with artists like Kanye West and managed to talk her out of lots of money. But after holes were poked in his story and they went to meet him, things went from awkward to satisfyingly savage very fast. We went on your SoundCloud page and we looked into some of the songs that you put up there and you didn't make them. Annoyed that Kid Cole was keeping up his facade, even when confronted about it, Neve grabbed his phone and threw it into a river. We'd never condone that behavior, but go Neve. How'd you do that? You've been playing people. Number three, Felicia and Jacqueline. My reputation went from like, wow, she's a really friendly, outgoing person, to like, wow, she's nothing but drama. Seeing your photos online with someone else's name underneath them has really got to make your blood boil. But seeing the person who stole them laugh in your face, well, that's a different story. Because they bullied me too. Like people, they're like, you're fake, you're fake. But you, but you were, were fake. fake but they didn't know that. Felicia contacted Neve and Max after a fake account named Jacqueline using her pictures re-emerged after going dormant. How you doing? Good. Are you kidding me? And after discovering a girl called Tracy was behind it all, they went to her house to confront her, only to be met by giggles and an entire lack of remorse. Hey, Tracy. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so cool. As Neve tries to understand her motives, Tracy continues to laugh it off. Then Max asks this serious question. And what if someone you cyberbullied killed themselves? Only for Tracy to once again show a total lack of responsibility for her actions. They made that choice themselves, so it's their fault, not mine. Number two, Spencer and Katie. So you've been talking to Spencer for the last six years? I have. Long story short, Spencer thought he was in a relationship with super famous pop star Katy Perry for six years. Unsurprisingly, he was not, and was in fact actually talking to a girl named Harriet. You don't know Katy Perry? No. <laughs> Anything not. to say to me? No, <laughs> I'm sorry, I guess. After meeting Harriet and hearing the truth, Spencer simply didn't believe her. Who else could it be? I mean, really, Katy? Not only is it hard to watch because of Spencer's delusions and Harriet's complete lack of sympathy for Spencer's situation, but even Max can't believe that Spencer is still in disbelief, even with the truth right in front of his eyes. You can't possibly think it's still Katy Perry. I do. It took a while, but Spencer finally let his Katy Perry dream go. There's no Katy Perry at the end of this rainbow. There's not even a girl who's in love with you. I think you really need to spend 
some time accepting that. Before we unveil our cringeworthy top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. My name's Kelsey. I'm Adam the Gambler. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, who are you? I'm Marcus. Um, I'm from Dallas. How old are you? I'm 43. Who is this? Missy. Don't come over here. Watch your flower. Because I feel like it's good for her to finally know the, tr the truth. And you, you could have told her that on the phone, though, right? Yeah, but in a way, I wanted to end Skylar. And I feel like by telling Jen who I am, like that ends Skylar. Well, oh. I came here, obviously, to introduce you to Kiana. Oh, my god. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Artis and Jess From time to time, people who appear on the show are in legitimate relationships as well as uncertain online ones, and this makes things tricky. Don't touch me. Better back up. Don't touch me. Here, Artis is in an online relationship with the beautiful blonde-haired Jess, but he's also living with the mother of his three children. Risking everything to meet Jess and see where the relationship goes, it turns out that Jess is a guy named Justin, who, as Max puts it, is like the girlfriend police. Are you Jess? Yeah, I'm Jess. You're Jess. Yeah. Taking pleasure out of catching cheaters online, Justin is intense, squaring up to artists and looking for a fight. You are pretending to be a girl online and, and having a romantic relationship with a guy, so... I give it to you, you got me there! Nothing quite tops the awkwardness of this encounter with the Batman-esque vigilante catfisher. Batfish? Okay, that's enough internet for today. I didn't think anything too much of it until, you know, honestly I started seeing guys like him who are already in a relationship. So I was like, you know what, I kind of have this power to use it for something, use it for good. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.